Andrew Partridge from Michelle Wall joins us. And Andrew, I think you called it, maybe it's even come a bit earlier, a bit of a turnaround in the market. Yes, Ricky, yeah. So we've got, um, obviously we're all, you know, it's well said, we've had the big run of sales and 50,000 barrel sales, which has sometimes been a bit of an impetus for the market to go down. And the market's absorbing the, the quantities of wool pretty well. We've had, yes, the market was there you know, a couple of weeks ago. We had that big shoot up and the large, you know, extra large rise in the market, which we all got a bit shocked by. And now it's settling back and, at a sort of more tradable level, the EMI just up four cents for the week to thirteen sixty eight. But when you look through the different microns, it was the finer microns at finer than eighteen, um, going up in some cases up to forty cents clean. And um, yeah, some nice fine wool actually coming onto the market at the moment, so helping those ones as well. Yeah, I noticed uh, you talk about those volumes. Uh, were there was there a bit of crossbred, you know, chasing that price because there were positive prices on crossbreds. Were we seeing a broader spread of volume uh, as opposed to maybe the finer wools this last week? Yes, yeah, certainly a lot of crossies coming forward. Um, real issue with crossies at the moment is the quality of them. Um, there's a lack of sort of classic preparation going on in the sheds. And with all the, the rain we've had, there's a lot of colour. Um, and China, and particularly China and the rest of the world, you know, it's a massively grown fibre. I think we alluded to the other day, we, we think we grow a lot of crossbreds, but um, we only grow like the total production of the world, about 20% of, of crossbreds. Like the rest of the world is enormous supply of crossbred in the market. They look to Australia as generally the better type of crossbred wool because we do generally prepare our wools a bit better. But this year with the season, uh, the colour and so forth, we're getting a lot of discounts for you know, ill-prepared lots and with lots of colour. But um, those better crossbreds are still selling OK. But, yeah, there's, there's a bit more demand there. Now, just to digress for a moment, uh, Joe Hall from Wool Producers Australia did advert to this shortage on the labour market. We've talked about shearers before. Is there possibly uh, a lack of that classing staff? Is that sort of feeding through to the quality that's coming through as we're struggling a bit to get the workers? It, it does a bit, yeah. No, certainly, like, the crossbred shearings, I'm guessing, and the shearers obviously shearing more of them, um, a lot of sheds now, uh, there's no wool classes present in the wool, in the shed. Um, and because it's a lower produced, you know, lower product, they're only getting $2 a kilo. In some cases, only a dollar to $2 a kilo. A lot of farmers are saying, well, you know, I'm not going to spend the money. Um, but there is there is a need to sort of prepare crossbeds to a certain degree for the market to absorb them. And, um, yeah, like I say, there's penalties if you don't. And uh, how have we gone across the nation with the three different major selling points? Have we got a fairly consistent market or are there some doing better, say, over in the West than others? Oh, look, it depends. And obviously West Australia is a bit of a time lag to us and they generally sell later in the day. So if there's a, an ill effect on the East Coast, it, it, it none the wiser travels across to the West and, and impacts their market. So there's a bit of a bull market in the East. The West will close on a, a firm note. If it's a bit softer in the East, the, the West will close on a lower point. So the West, you know, they do take a guide at the end of the day when West the West does sell because they're the last market of the day that sells. So there's a bit of a lead into the following day's sales. I suppose it, am I confusing you by saying that? No, no, it sounds a lot like what happens with Wall Street in our share market. <laughs> if, they, if they have a cold, suddenly we start having a sniffle. Yeah, the, the idea that the, the wool prices differ in different parts of Australia, as you know, with the internet and so forth, China and the, re- the rest of the world knows exactly what's going on every second of the day. So, you know, there's no orders get placed into markets and they can change throughout the day, of course, and that's what drives price. But there's no there's no you know, one market, better market to sell wool in Australia. They're all on the even keel. And when it comes to an even keel, it seems like the volumes are going to be uh, on a continuing at that high level for a little while to come. I think so. Yeah, I think there's a lot of sh- there's still plenty of shearing going on. Um, there's delayed shearing, of course. So we've got overlong wool coming in the market and stuff that you know, hasn't been shorn. They're three months, you know, three months behind and this sort of thing. So there, are, I still think there's a, there's a pair of wool sort of coming forward. I notice on Facebook and different things with shearing, you know, shearing jobs and whatever. There's a few more, maybe a few more jobs getting posted around, them, but there might be a few areas that just the shearing's actually slowing down a bit. There's a few shearers looking for work. Um, but certainly there's plenty of shearing going on around the place. Well, the positive news, I think, to take away from all of that is despite the volume, the price is holding up in a pretty resilient way. Good news for our wool growers. Yeah, no, spot on, Ricky. No, it's a good market. Um, yeah, look, it's still a bit of tempting to the market going up the next couple of weeks. I actually can't sort of see that now, but there is a, yeah, well, let's see what happens in a couple of weeks' time. All right, we'll have the update for you next week here on Flow FM with Andrew Partridge from Michelle Wool. Thanks for joining us today. Cheers, Ricky.